The Sealy Mattress Company presents... Calling all detectives. A transcontinental train, a million-dollar insurance policy, and a salt shaker. Those are the exhibits on this page from my casebook, the casebook of Jerry Browning, private detective. What is the real name of S.S. Van Dyne? That is the Sealy Mystery Quiz question, now worth $180. If the person we telephone at the end of the program can answer a question based on tonight's story, he or she will earn a famous Sealy Toughless Inner Spring Mattress, plus a chance to answer the Sealy Mystery Quiz question. So, pull up a chair and listen closely to Calling All Detectives. If there's one thing a private detective like me, Jerry Browning, ignores, it's superstition. The police photographer finished his grim work. Pictures of the body on the bedroom floor. The murdered man was Zachary Talkett. He owned a chain of newspapers, and when he was alive, millions of people read his daily editorials. Now that he'd been shot through the heart, millions wanted to know who killed him. One of them was John Cooley, head of the Investigations Department of Consolidated Insurance, which is why I was at Talkett's apartment that muggy autumn morning. Lieutenant Dawson of Homicide strolled over to me. I was sitting in the living room at a table that had been set for dinner for two. A dinner that had never been eaten. Dawson sat down alongside of me. Jerry, this dinner table shows that Talkett was expecting a guest last night. When he was shot, he fell forward, broke his pocket watch. It stopped at 20 minutes past 8. It's 9.30 a.m. now. And the rigor mortis condition of the body indicates that Talkett has been dead a little over 12 hours. Angeline Walker's been going with Talkett. If she has no alibi for 8.20 last night, she's halfway to the chair. Talkett wanted to marry Angeline Walker. Why would she kill him? Dawson mopped his brow. I'll have all the answers after she confesses. Talkett certainly kept it hot in here. I'll tell the boys to open a few windows. I stayed at the table and reflected that if Angeline Walker was guilty, my client would have to pay Talkett's beneficiary a million dollars on the policy. The beneficiary was Harvey Considine, Talkett's nephew, and at the moment on a train bound for the West Coast. There was a salt shaker at my elbow. I picked it up, idly let the salt pour out in a swift stream on the tablecloth. There's an old superstition that spilled salt is supposed to spell out the name of a murderer. All this heap of salt did was make a mess on the tablecloth. And when I traced some figures in the dry stuff, what I wrote was one million dollars. Friends, it doesn't take a detective to discover the finest mattress that ever put the handcuffs on insomnia. S-E-A-L-Y spells Sealy, and Sealy mattresses spell S-L-E-E-P. Refreshing, restful sleep that helps you and your family feel better, look better, work better. Sealy mattresses are toughless, buttonless, bumpless, smooth as sleep itself. And only Sealy has that inner magic, the Miracle Mesh Protector. It's the patented construction which eliminates spring feel, stops shifting of padding, halts sagging or lumping, and improves resilience as it preserves restful comfort. Yes, this Sealy exclusive does away with mid-mattress sag and side sag, too. Sealy mattresses are healthfully firm, yet surface soft with just enough give to give you the right rest. You sleep on a Sealy, not in it. So say Sealy and really invest in true rest. Stop counting sheep. Count on Sealy for years and years of rest that's right every night. Sleeping on a Sealy is like sleeping on a cloud. And now, back to Jerry Browning. When a wealthy newspaper publisher was murdered, suspicion centered around a woman named Angeline Walker. Dawson arrested Angeline Walker about two hours after Talkett's body was found, rushed her off to jail. She refused to give an alibi. I sat alongside Dawson's desk and looked unhappy. Dawson, I think you've been hasty. Angeline Walker hasn't admitted anything. We know that she refused to marry Talkett at least twice, and she had nothing to gain by killing him. Dawson grinned at me. Jerry, you're worrying about Consolidated Insurance's million-dollar policy. You'd like to involve Harvey Considine, even though he was on a train eight hours before Talkett died. The only thing you got against Considine is that he inherits Talkett's money and gets the policy benefits. A man who walked into Dawson's office was tall, thin, and determined. Lieutenant, I'm Pete Loring, publicity director for Pure Test Food Products. Angeline Walker was with me last night from 7 o'clock on. 
Dawson smiled. Yeah? Why didn't she say so? Because we were married last night by a justice of the peace over at Portstown. We wanted to keep it secret because her folks don't approve of me, but we didn't figure on keeping it this secret. Dawson's jaw sagged and his face turned from pink to deep purple. One phone call to Portstown and one hour later, Angela Walker and her husband left police headquarters and Dawson was left holding the bag. I fell into step with Dawson as he emerged from the police commissioner's office. Dawson, that was a mistake anybody could have made. Now let's think of Harvey Considine. He's the only man who stands to gain anything by Talker's death. And what he stands to gain is a fortune. Dawson opened and closed his mouth a couple of times, but no sound came out. Whatever the commissioner had said to him, it must have been pretty searing. Finally, Jerry, Considine is on the Sunshine Limited. We know that. He boarded the train here eight hours before Talkett was killed. He's been riding ever since. And right this minute, he's still on the train someplace in Utah. Jerry, he's got the world's best alibi. And if I stick my neck out again, the commissioner will purely lop my head off. I argued with him the length of the corridor. Dawson, I figure all that stuff at the apartment was a setup. The dinner table, the broken watch in Talkett's pocket, a lot of stuff indicating that Talkett was killed around 8.30 last night. When, as a matter of fact, he might have been killed many hours earlier. The body wasn't discovered until 9 o'clock the following morning, so there's no knowing when he was killed. Dawson shook his head sadly. I thought of all that, Jerry, but the autopsy report is absolute. Rigor mortis determines how long the body's been dead. That rigor mortis is determined by the condition of the body, the temperature of the room, and a lot of other scientific stuff there's no arguing with. Jerry, the lab says Talkett was killed at 8.30 last night, and by that time Harvey Considine was almost 500 miles from here on that train. I shrugged. Okay, Dawson. Far be it from me to argue with the lad. But how about you and me going back to Talkett's apartment and taking another look around? It was about six o'clock at night when we entered the apartment. The body was gone, of course, but otherwise the place was just as it had been that morning. The table was still set for the dinner that had never been eaten, and the air in the apartment was just as muggy and oppressive as it had been that morning. We putted around the place for perhaps half an hour, found nothing that the eagle eyes of the homicide squad experts had missed. After a while, I sat down again at the table. There was a caked puddle of salt on the tablecloth. I picked up the salt shaker as I had that morning tilted it over. Nothing came out of it, so I unscrewed the top. It was about half full of salt, all of it caked in a soggy, compact mass from the dampness. I stared at it. That's funny. This morning, this salt flowed freely, and it was just as damp in here as it is now. Dawson, this is very funny. Jerry, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not sure that I do either, but just for the fun of it, let's talk to whoever's on the service elevator. We found the service elevator operator, and I asked him, was anything taken out of Mr. Talkett's apartment early this morning, for instance, like an air conditioning unit? Why, yes, now that you mention it, the uh, frost air service people were around here at 8 o'clock this morning. They said they had a call last night to pick up the air conditioning unit and uh, put a new motor in it. Well, they didn't steal it, did they? No, they didn't steal it. I turned to Dawson. Talkett's body was in the bedroom, the air conditioning unit in the living room. And that changes all the factors that determine when rigor mortis sets in. Dawson, I think you'd better wire ahead and have Harvey Considine taken off the Sunshine Limited. Considine was guilty, of course. He'd killed Talkett just before taking his train at noon, counted on the powerful air conditioning unit to throw out all the factors on rigor mortis. Then he arranged with the service company to pick the unit up the first thing in the morning, knowing that the maid would not arrive and find the body until an hour later. It was a clever stunt. And might have worked if it hadn't been for the salt that ran freely in the still dry air of the morning and had caked by that night. Like I said, I don't go along with any superstitions, but I know at least one murderer that spilled salt sent to the chair. Jerry Browning will make that phone call and we'll have the Sealy Mystery Quiz in a moment. Meanwhile, Jerry, some mornings does your back feel as though you'd like to give it back to the Indians? 
then, friend, you haven't discovered the new Sealy mattress, the Sealy orthopedic firma rest inner spring mattress. It's America's most modern mattress, approved by the American Medical Association, and scientifically made to give relief from backache due to sprains or muscular distension. Yes, the Sealy orthopedic inner spring mattress combines gentle, firm, non sag support with all the restful comfort of the most luxurious inner spring mattress. It's patented and perfect for all who want refreshing sleep and all who need healthful, gentle back support. Get this sensational Sealy orthopedic inner spring at your favorite furniture or department store. You'll sleep on it, not in it. Your back will thank you, and like all who enjoy Sealy sleep, you're sure to agree. Sleeping on a Sealy is like sleeping on a cloud. Now it's time for the Sealy Mystery Quiz. What's our first number tonight, Jerry? Well, George Bauer, we're trying Danube first. D, A, 6, 2, 6, and here are the rest. Well, uh, Jerry, just what's the question about tonight's story? In what town were Angeline Walker and Pete Loring married? All right, and if the listener we phone can answer that question, he or she will earn a Sealy Tuftless Inner Spring Mattress plus an opportunity to answer the Sealy Mystery Quiz question, now worth $180. And incidentally, if you were talking to me before... Oh, hello. This is Jerry Browning calling from WGN on the Sealy Calling All Detectives program. If you answer my question about tonight's story, you can earn a nationally advertised Sealy Tuftless Inner Spring Mattress, plus an opportunity to answer the Sealy Mystery Quiz question, now worth $180 in cash. What is your name, please? Mrs. Anthony Amato? All right, Mrs. Amato, here's your first question. In what town were Angeline Walker and Pete Loring married? Oh, I'm very sorry you don't know that, Mrs. Amato, but Sealy Mattress Company is going to send you a consolation award worth $5. Thanks very much, and good night. I believe we well, have time I think... for another call, Jerry. Yes, we do. Oh, and you Bishop just going is to it. say that? I was going to. B, I, 7, O, 3, and there are the rest. Incidentally, as I was starting to say before, if you were asking me about my back, that's a silly question. I've been sleeping on a Sealy for over a year. <laughs> and it certainly is a pleasure to have Sealy back with us on the program, too. Oh, I hope we start ringing soon. What exchange are we in now, Jerry? It's Bishop. Well, it started to do something, and then we had silence. Now it's ringing. Possibly these people are... Hello. <laughs> Is your mother there? <laughs> That's a little girl, I think. Little girl or little boy. <laughs> Hello. This is Jerry Browning calling from WGN on the Sealy Calling All Detectives program. If you answer my question about tonight's story, you can earn a nationally advertised Sealy Toughless Inner Spring Mattress and an opportunity to answer our Sealy Mystery Quiz question, which is worth $180 in cash. What is your name, please? Mrs. Schaefer? Well, here's the question, Mrs. Schaefer. In what town were Angeline Walker and Pete Loring married? Oh, I'm I'm very sorry you don't know that, Mrs. Schaefer. Well, the, the correct answer... mystery quiz question. All right. The correct answer was Portstown, Mrs. Schaefer. The question remains, what is the real name of S.S. Van Dyne? Tomorrow's award for the Sealy Mystery Quiz question will be $200, so keep listening. Remember, too, that sleeping on a Sealy is like sleeping on a cloud. Pleasant dreams. This is WGN Chicago 11.